Hey guys, it's Stan here back with another video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about the Sound Blaster AE9 sound card that I recently picked up. And I'm gonna kind of focus in on why I decided to pick this up and what some of the features that I really liked and you know some of the things that I didn't like. So uh, this isn't gonna be a very technical review. This isn't gonna be looking at graphs. There's a lot of good resources out there, but it's just kind of my overall thoughts about this product. So well, without further ado, let's get into it. Now, I do realize sound cards are a thing of the past, really. Most of you guys don't even buy sound cards anymore, and that's primarily because motherboard sound, you know, sound integrated sound is just so good these days, especially if you pick up a high-end motherboard, like one of those Asus ROG boards that have the dedicated little daughter boards or dedicated sections of the motherboard that have dedicated sound, you know, that's perfectly fine for most people, but I'm not most people and I am a tech YouTuber, so we only demand the best. Now, this is basically the best sound card you can buy out there. It's probably the most expensive as well. Sound Blaster needs no introduction. Um, you know, they've been around for decades now making sound cards and the AE9 sits at the very top of the range. There's really two main components coming out of the AE9, the actual sound card and the ACM, uh, which stands for, I wanna say audio control module, ACM, audio control module, yeah, that was right. Uh, and it really allows you to connect a lot of different inputs and outputs and have it all work together. Right out of the box, you get the sound card and the ACM module right underneath and to the side here, you have a bunch of cables and manuals and literature. So you have the instruction manual, you have a quick start guide, you have the RCA cable, you get a toss link cable, one of those optical cables, as well as, uh, is it a USB cable? I can't remember. A three and a half millimeter to RCA splitter. So that's gonna be coming in very handy if you don't have any RCA inputs on your speakers. Now, the ACM is connected via a single cable to the actual uh, sound card using something like a mini HDMI cable. It's, I don't know if it's proprietary, but it's definitely built into the ACM, meaning you can't swap it out. I really would have liked to see a USB connector on both ACM and the sound card. That would have been really nice to be able to get your own cable and you know get different lengths if you need to. However, uh, since this cable is built into the ACM and cannot be removed, uh, the cable is a pretty good length. Uh, my computer is decently far away from my monitor and I have a 38 inch ultra wide, so there's a you know, pretty big distance and it was enough, long enough. So if it wasn't long enough for me, probably it should be long enough for most people if their computer is on their desk or below their desk. On the back of the sound card, you have a bunch of connectors as well. You have two RCA connectors and then you have a, a pair of rear and center for your 5.1 surround sound. Uh, you have an optical out and an optical in, which is nice if you have that kind of setup. And then you, of course you have the ACM module connector. On the ACM, you have a bunch of inputs and a big knob. So the big knob is good for changing the volume, changing the input source, as well as mute. So you just depending on how long you hold it for. So uh, that's really nice. The display is a very bright white LED that displays the volume in decibels or the inputs, speakers versus headphones. And then you, below that, you've got a bunch of inputs. So you've got the headphone jack in, a headphone jack out. You've got a one of those larger headphone jack outs as well as a XLR in. Uh, this XLR in can provide up to 48 volts of phantom power. So it's quoted to be good for uh, condenser mics, dynamic mics, and you know the like. So on paper, this whole package is almost perfect for you know what you should need for very good high fidelity outputs, either headphones or speakers, and also have an array of inputs for your you know, gaming or whatever needs or broadcasting needs. So 
um, you know, that's at least how they advertise this product. And coming in at over 300 some dollars, this is certainly a very premium product. All that said here, then, you know, the question is how well does it work? And actually, before I get to that, let's talk about the install process because installing the sound card is very straightforward. Just slide it into the PCIe Express slot and power it with a PCIe cable. Uh, one of those six pin cables is enough to power this uh, sound card and then connect the ACM module around the back. Plug in your RCA connectors for your speakers or whatever you're using and basically you're ready to go. Download the drivers and install and, and then you're done. So with that all out of the way, the question is how well does it work? Does it sound good? And without quantitatively looking at graphs and, and, and whatnot, I can definitely say it does sound good. You know, I've got some studio monitors. These are Atom A5Xs with a sub eight subwoofer. The sound coming out of the speakers sounded really good. And what I think is probably more telling is the performance on my Shure SE846s because I connected these into the ACM on the front. And uh, the ACM has a little switch that has both uh, a triple impedance switch. So you have IEMs, normal, and then the high, high resistance headphones. And you know, you swap that over to IEMs and you have the ability to turn down the volume all the way down to extremely low. And especially because this is a very, very low impedance IEM, you get a lot of hiss in a lot of different types of sources. I'm glad to say that with the IEM setting and turn it all the way down to negative 90 decibels, there was not a single bit of hiss. And that's, I guess that's where the 129 dB DAC comes in because the sound is just, it, it, it's great. On some MacBook Pros, for example, you know, you plug it in and you get that little bit of hiss uh, on, on a lot of audio players. These are just way too sensitive for most things. So uh, I am, you know, I'm really, really happy that the ACM module works very well. One of the problems with one of the previous Sound Blaster uh, sound cards, the ZXR with the that, that old ACM, that thing, that thing hissed so bad that it was just unable to be used. This thing is great. The ACM output is great. The sound is good. There's a lot of software and a lot of abilities to change profiles, do the EQs, change uh, configuration, virtual 7.1 surround sound, uh, virtualization. Quite honestly, uh, I'm not a huge fan of the creative profiles. I'm not a huge fan of mixing and, and, and playing around with a lot of the the gaming features. I really just prefer sound coming out, you know, as, as, as clean as possible uh, without all of the mixing and, and whatnot. If that's your thing, you can play, go in there and play with the sound radar and listen to all the footsteps, give you a little, little bit of, uh, you know, in sound imaging when you're gaming. It has all that. I have not tried it. Um, again, just because that's not my thing. So, I went in there, turned off most of the EQs or most of the, the profiles and the, the virtualization and whatnot. So I'm just talking about the pure direct sound coming out of the sound card on the speakers, listening to music, listening to your video sources and even your games. It just sounded pretty good. Having good outputs is only half the story because this product is advertised to have really good inputs as well. In fact, there's a lot of different inputs on the ACM. And we've got XLR in, well, that works with both condenser and dynamic mics, and it is able to switch on 48 volts of phantom power. It's got a headphone in jack, the 3.5 millimeter, and it's also able to have uh, a triple ring input as well. So if you've got, let's say, those Apple earbuds, or um, you know one of these headsets, or earphones with an inline mic with the triple ring, just plug that into the headphone jack and it'll actually start pulling in audio as well. Not that you'll probably want to use something like that, but having the option is always good. Now, if you're looking at this product wondering, can I grab an SN7B and grab this Sound Blaster and perhaps skip the GoXLR, right? 
uh, what you're going to find is, unfortunately, this input isn't as good as um, or isn't a really good replacement for that. And you'll hear in a second what I mean. What I'll do here is start recording Audacity and talking directly into the mic. And I've got it set up so that it's pulling in audio from the mic. And um, we all know that the SM7B requires a lot of gain to be able to uh, get proper audio and what you're probably what you're probably hearing is very little volume uh, from the audacity recording so there is an option here that has a microphone boost of 10 decibels and by boosting the 10 decibels you can see there's a little bit of um, you know picking it's picking up something here but it's only until you get to 20 decibels and talking maybe two, three inches away from the mic where you're actually picking up proper amounts of volume. This amount of volume is just about right for uh, for the sounding of this mic. However, the problem is most likely you're hearing a little bit of buzzing as well because we've boosted the mic input by 20 decibels. The uh, There's a little bit of static and hopefully the recording is picking it up. Otherwise, um, actually, I'm just going to shut up for a moment and let you hear that. Hopefully you heard it. When I was playing back, listening to this device while talking, I heard that uh, buzzing when I've turned up my speakers. I could hear it coming back through. So I guess the takeaway is that it will work. It will power a SM7B if you crank it all the way up to 20 uh, decibels of boost. However, the audio line is not as clean as it needs to be to be able to properly drive this mic. The last thing we can potentially do is to turn on a little bit of uh, noise reduction. And in, in here you can hear, as soon as I turn on this noise reduction, what you'll hear is that the hissing goes away. However, the sound quality gets completely destroyed. Uh, it, or it just doesn't sound as good anymore. So let me just be quiet for a moment. And again, hopefully you hear that it's it's no longer, there's no longer any hissing. But again, you don't buy this product to turn on noise reduction to get rid of the hissing. Um, sadly, more likely than not, you'll still have to go get a uh, XLR, Go XLR Mini or Go XLR. And if you're planning on doing streaming and whatever with this microphone to be able to get that good, clean audio input. Now, as a baseline control, what you're hearing right now is from the Yeti X microphone. This is a USB microphone connected directly to the computer. And this is basically what a good clean audio signal should sound like without any hiss. So unfortunately, it looks like the SM7B and this combination is, is just no good. As you can see, this is not perfect. This is a really good product. Uh, the outputs are phenomenal. The ability to change between speakers and headphones with a push of a button or a click in the software without going in and changing uh, you know, default settings or whatever is great. I always wanted to have something that swaps between speakers and headphones by just you know, hitting a button here without things crashing or without things, you know, software not working or like iTunes. iTunes sometimes stops playing when you change sources, right? So having that ability to do that mid song and have it just pick up right where it, you know, it left off is great. However good the outputs are, the inputs are of this device is kind of where, where it's a little bit lacking. You hear, you heard this hissing noises. Um, the SM7B is a dynamic mic. It's possible if you had a condenser mic or a you know mic that uses phantom power, that might perform a little bit different, a little bit better. However, at least the example that I was showing you guys, the SM7B, was not working well with this device. If you're looking to stream or you need an input, I would definitely take a look at the Go XLR Mini or the Go XLR. That's a very good multi-input uh, device. I have tried one out. I've actually got, got one right there. Um, and, and maybe I'll do a video on that at some time later. But 
that, 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 that's, that's another topic. Hopefully this gives you a kind of a good idea of what this product is all about. If you have any questions, of course, go ahead and comment down below as well. And as always, if you found this video useful, make sure to hit that like button and I'll see you guys in the next one.